Ah, squeeze of the night. What sweet debauchery they make. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, continuing on with our Supernatural Season 4 reviews of Episode 5, Monster Movie. This is an episode, obviously, paying homage to the monster movies of the black and white days, and I think it does a very respectful job. While the episode does modernize some of the aspects of it by throwing the brothers and just modern day aspects into it, the fact that they even used old techniques, using dry ice, lightning flashes, all those kind of things, it's fun how they integrate them into the episode, and it doesn't feel forced, it doesn't feel hammy, except when it means to. It's a fun episode. I like all of the aspects about it, even the little bit of humanity that they add to the monster guy at the end of the episode. The episode has the boys going into Pennsylvania because a person has been vampire attacked. The sheriff of the town, Gary Chalk, who I literally just worked with, I had him sign uh, the first season of uh, Reboot here. For those of you who don't know who he voiced, he was Optimus Prime for Beast Wars. He was a few characters, several characters. Uh, I think he was Slash. The guy has essentially been working in BC for forever. But he's a really nice guy. Funny to see him in this episode because I knew he was in one Supernatural episode. When they check out the body, it's not the kind of vampire attack they're used to. It's got just the two prongs. Then a guy gets ripped apart by a werewolf. Everything about that was put together very well in terms of hearkening back to the old days. And I definitely want to give credit where credit is due. The set deck, props, and the music in this episode are top notch. Everything is to the point in terms of hearkening back to what is the theme of the episode. The music in particular is very, very good. It's done by Jay Gruska and Christopher Lennertz, who Christopher, I think, did a lot of work for Supernatural, and so did Jay, but Jay worked on a bunch of older movies. If you look at his filmography, he did the soundtrack for Adventures of the Babysitters, Little Shop of Horrors, Commando. The music that they produce is very, very good at harkening back to the old black and whites. It has the feel, it has the production value to it. Half of this episode is the way it is because of the music. And as I said, the set deck and prop guys do a really good job. The dungeon in the guy's basement, which makes no sense whatsoever, but it's still a really well-made dungeon. And I love that it's also purposely fake like when Sam kicks the thing in and he just busts a hole through the wall but talking about the monster himself he's actually got a lot of good bits in this episode when he gets away from Dean on the little moped was hilarious when he's trying to convince Jamie to be his bride and then he actually goes on to that kind of self-talk about being an actual monster and finding solace in monsters of the age and how they were celebrated and worshipped back in the day, and he kind of wishes to be like that. And then also the pizza bit. I love it every time. It's such an awkward conversation. I imagine there must be some outtakes of them just busting, just laughing at how funny this scene is. If there's any negatives to the episode, I would say that Dean's dialogue is... Ugh. I understand that they're kind of upping what would have been the dialogue of the time and kind of turning it towards what Dean would be, but my god, some of the lines that he lays down in this episode are... I don't know if they haven't aged well, they're just hammy to me. But I do like the Jamie character, I like her, I like Sam when he goes to confront that weird guy, who by the way drinks his stein in the strangest way, but it's so funny every time. That theater, by the way, is the Cloverdale Theater, I live very close to it. It's not a movie theater anymore, but when it was active it was one of those one room, one screen theaters. It's a church now, I think, so it's still technically there. I like the episode, I think it's funny, it's got good pacing, it's a great monster of the week episode while also being an homage to the old days it's cool it's funny and it's a good change of pace for the season especially with what we just were given after the four really heavy heavy down hitters this one's a nice uppity uppity reminding us that there is humor in the show so in the end i'm gonna give monster movie a five out of seven it's a solid episode and i asked you guys to give me your thoughts on this episode so let's read those off now so we had a few here my favorite actually being this one here the funniest story i have is that todd Staswick, who plays the monster in the monster movie whispered to jensen who was strapped to the gurney in lederhosen and him in the dracula outfit he said to him remember we are grown men doing this that's really funny. Monster Movie is where you can tell they, everyone was having fun. I particularly enjoy the cinematography done by Robert Singer. 
Singer's the director, he's not the DOP, but I get where you're coming from. Ben Endland is to this day one of my favorite writers for the show, and the humor on this episode is genuine laugh out loud. But the homage to older horror movies is met really well in this episode. I found it very interesting that the show felt it important to emphasize Dean's resurrection from the angels, took away his body scarring, and made him healthy again. Overall, once again, this is a solid episode. Season 4 is one of those seasons that stepped up its game for the entire show. I hope you review this in a black and white with an overtop Halloween costume. Unfortunately, my costume has been stored away since this. I did think about that, but I just didn't want to put the costume back on in January. Skin, Season 1, Night Shifter Season 2, Monster Movie Season 4, and Two and a Half Men Season 6 are some of the most memorable Shapeshifter episodes. Shapeshifters appear past Season 6, but unfortunately they are far more forgettable in their later appearances. In A Dream, A Little Dream of Me, Season 3, Supernatural's writers planned on using Jason Voorhees since the studio thought that they had the rights to the Friday the 13th series when they did not. So it was kind of nice that Supernatural writers were allowed to use Universal's classic monsters, Dracula, Wolfman, Mummy, for this episode. If I'm correct, they are in creative common law, so kind of like how Sherlock Holmes can be used by anyone. I think that's kind of where they get that from, but I might be wrong. Monster movie. I love this one. The special touch black and white B movie genre. I feel sorry for him being the monster, as I think we were meant to. A reminder that monsters didn't pick that life, yet still accountable for what they do with it. I thought the pizza coupon scene with the delivery guy was hilarious. Season 4 is spectacular. Yeah. Yes, that is a fantastic scene. Monster Movie was a fun and entertaining episode, parodied on right. Ben Endlin is pure genius. Honestly, they tried to copy Endlin's bizarre and ingenious writing in later seasons, but failed miserably. This episode is so underrated. Last one here, Monster Movie. It's fine. I didn't laugh that much, but I didn't cringe either. Also, can I ask a question? Are you going to review seasons 6 to 10? Yep, that's the plan. Uh, as far as I know, I'm going to continue on right to where I started, which was my overall season review of season 10. So yeah, we're going to go all the way. Next episode is Yellow Fever. Hey, we're going to be celebrating an Andrew Dab episode. You can't downturn this episode at all. It's too goddamn funny. So give me your guys' thoughts on Yellow Fever, and I'll read those off in the next video review. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, I got a link to the Patreon down below. These are the people who are with us right now. It's awesome to see these guys supporting us. Otherwise, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz. And you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.